Hi everybody, it's Mark from Blue Poodle Studio, and today we're here to talk about the uh, property, entertainment property, Inspector Gadget. Uh, it's not quite as common or available today, but we're going to go back in time and look a little bit about the history of the property, uh, but then we're also going to fast forward, well I say fast forward to 1999 to talk about the live action film and the corresponding set of Happy Meal toys uh, from our friends over at McDonald's. So. Uh, where did Inspector Gadget come from? Inspector Gadget was uh, first launched in 1983 in an animated TV series developed by uh, Deke Entertainment. And if you're not familiar with the property, um, it's a story of a kind of a bumbling uh, policeman who is injured and ends up being recreated as a cyborg. Now, you know, you kind of, I think back on more dramatic sci-fi films like RoboCop, where cyborgs go in a much more extreme direction, but this was the, he was the kinder, gentler cyborg, if you will. So he was uh, bumbling and, and uh, kind of absent-minded, but caring and really very protective. Uh, also in the TV series, you meet uh, his niece, Penny, and her dog, The Brain, who turn out to actually be uh, the brains behind the operation doing all the real uh, crime and mystery solving, if you will. Um, uh, his nemesis in the series is a character named Dr. Claw. You don't actually see in the animated series, but we'll talk about him as a character in the live action film. And there uh, ran the film, the TV series ran for two seasons in 19, 1983 through 1986 and then had several spin-offs into books and etc. Uh, but again, what we're going to talk about today is the, uh, the live action film. Uh, however, in the journey of the property, uh, there was an interesting little bit of conflict because uh, the good folks over at MGM had the uh, a famous inspector character called Inspector Clouseau, who was the bumbling a detective in the Pink Panther film series from Blake Edwards that started in 1963. And um, Inspector Clouseau, of course, likewise had a, a kind of a trilby hat and a trench coat and a big mustache. And that made him very similar to the Inspector Gadget character. And so the folks over at uh, MGM brought a lawsuit and said, ah, we think he kind of copied us. And uh, oddly, the only thing that the Deke people did was change and remove the mustache from Inspector Gadget, so he less resembled Inspector Clouseau. Uh, another interesting source of inspiration, I think, for the series was uh, the spy craze of the 60s, certainly started by James Bond, but lots of TV shows and movie spinoffs. And in particular, uh, there was the um, uh, TV series Get Smart, starring uh, a character named uh, an actor named Don Adams portraying the character Maxwell Smart and Don Adams then went on to be uh, the voice talent uh, of Inspector Gadget in the original uh, TV animated TV series and so kind of a fun uh, cross reference there but let's then fast forward to uh, 19 probably late 90s uh, when the film went into development uh, through Caravan Pictures. Caravan Pictures was uh, uh, had a picture deal, multi-picture deal with Disney on the lot and was run by um, Joe Roth and his partner, uh, Roger Birnbaum. Joe Roth later went on to become the head of Disney Studios after the big blow up between Jeffrey Katzenberg and Michael Eisner and there was some big kind of drama there. Now, what about the toys? So, uh, you know, uh, kids' premium toys have been popular for several years, started by McDonald's, but different companies, Taco Bell, Burger King has various ones. But the toy license from Disney kind of went back and forth between McDonald's and Burger King, but at this time, it was being run by McDonald's. And uh, a friend of mine, the guy that I used to, that I hired a long time ago, a great industrial designer, uh, he had left, uh, gone to Hasbro uh, after working for me at Mead and then later went on to one of the premium houses for McDonald's. And what uh, my friend was telling me was how uh, they had hired a lot of uh, toy designers from uh, both Mattel and Hasbro to really up their game. And so as a result, uh, you know, the, the toy premiums for McDonald's got more sophisticated, more elaborate, and many would say uh, this uh, action figure uh, from uh, Inspector Gadget 
was maybe the most complex one that McDonald's ever did. And in fact, it's it's been continually or consistently reviewed as a great example of innovation and creativity in the toy industry uh, when McDonald's did it and shown here in this uh, uh, Kitty Collectibles book. So let's take a look at these toys now. There's eight pieces in total. Oh, I did want to show, uh, I found this uh, poster. I don't own this, but this was uh, one of the display cards used in McDonald's at the time that kind of highlighted and introduced the toys. And basically each piece of Inspector Gadget has its own function. So there are eight parts in total. Let's take a look at some of those now. So uh, part number one is the body. And of course, this is a pretty good sculpt, I think, of Matthew Broderick, who portrayed uh, the actor that portrayed Inspector Gadget in the film. And uh, this is his torso, and you can kind of see a cutaway inside. And uh, we push down on his head, and this is called the Navic 7 Sparker. And, uh, you know, it's a kind of a traditional uh, toy mechanics uh, to have the sparks coming out inside. Also, the piece is color-coordinated, so these different colors, blue, red, green, and purple, kind of help guide you on putting it together. So that's, pr that's pretty slick. And again, see him inside. So part number two, is the grabber arm and uh, the little arm sticks out and it's got a grabbing action there and uh, if you ever had a little brother uh, this would be the kind of toy I would have annoyed my sister or brother with when I was a kid so uh, that, that's a fun piece. Uh, part number three was the watch that became his belt. I still have one in package. I used to have one that was open and the kids played with it and I think it got broken. Uh, part number four is the uh, leg, and this is the tool leg, and uh, it kind of pops out and becomes a pair of pliers. Again, uh, something to uh, tease or annoy your friends with. I uh, don't think you could change a tire with this, but it's still a fun idea all the same. Uh, part number four, or excuse me, five, is the, uh, is the other leg, and uh, although it doesn't work anymore, there was a battery button you would push and there would be a light up like a secret electronic code and who didn't love codes and spy gear in those days. So uh, that's that part there. Uh, then the uh, part number uh, six is a squirt gun. This is his other arm, the arm squirter and uh, a little bit reminiscent uh, of some of the bigger squirt guns you see today. Uh, you can load up a lot of water and you know chase your friends around. Uh, part number seven is the communicator, secret communicator, and it's the front torso of Inspector Gadget, but inside uh, there was a little flap that unfortunately broke off and it had electronics, made some fun sounds like an early, uh, early mobile phone. So got that continuity. And then uh, finally, uh, part number eight, the siren hat. And so you spin the siren on the top and it makes a great siren sound and uh, everybody knows Inspector Gadget, the propeller would pop out of his head and uh, he would fly away. So let's see if we can, if I can put all these together and uh, build our build our action figure this afternoon. So there we have it, the final figure doll put together. Uh, it's really a great piece. It stands uh, about 14 inches tall, even without his legs being extended. And, uh, you know, I guess if there were a lesson for me for this, it's that don't ever be afraid and we should always try to put extra innovation and creativity into whatever you're doing. Whether you're a student working on a project in school or you're a working professional, don't just do the same thing, try something different. And that's really what the promotion houses did for McDonald's and this product and really ratcheted it up to another level. And it's quite a successful piece and still quite popular uh, in the collector's markets today. So at any rate, great talking with you today. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to follow us, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos and stories. And of course, check out the ongoing series of photos and stories from, in our, from our toy collection in uh, our Facebook and uh, Instagram accounts, again, for Blue Poodle Studio. So thanks for joining us today. Talk to you again soon.